India Indians and its neighbor India Indians and its neighbor okay what what is the condition of India a tiger is assuring a deer that I will protect a tiger is assuring a deer that I shall protect you don't worry that way the democratic system in India protects its people home rule and democratic system I mean I'm pointing to a party that you understand that no one will be jobless and you will be provided with the job no one will be kind of uh, uh, the uh, LPG cylinder less means the uh, cooking uh, cooking uh, whatever the uh, item uh, the item that is used to cook okay fuel so no one will be fuel less we will provide you the fuel no one will be jobless we will provide you the job okay and tiger is saying to deer that no one will be, uh, no one will be kind of insecure i will provide you the security the people who took out the job of everyone is assuring people that we will give you job people who took out fuel of uh, every household now they are saying that we will give you lpg cylinder Be prior to 1947 there was no concept of dearthness of the fuel there was no concept of unemployment why how okay so india indians and their neighborhood means people who have become neighbor of India, even though some time back it was India only, but now they are neighbors. Since there it was India only, India was a bigger country and there was no problem in the employment and fuel are concerned. Things were different and people were not crying the way they are crying. So the people who made Indians cry for mere fuel and few rupees, now they are telling them get assured tiger is telling to deer that get assured that you will keep getting i mean what i am saying is the way i took it out from you okay in the same way it will continue yes, i don't know how people are that but anyway let us start indian country, india country and its neighborhood so maldives maldives is a country that is south to india and maldives Maldip means, Mal means garland, Dweep means island. So, a uh, set of island, they look like a garland. Like I put a garland on someone, they, they, lo they look like a garland. Okay. And Maldip is precious for India. It falls in Indian subcontinent. And it precious to India because Maldip touches the equatorial line. Okay the equatorial that is the line that is in the center of the earth maldive crosses it so india through maldive immediately it crosses the equatorial so that's how it is precious to india. now if you see the political scenario of maldive and india it is red eye means many times maldivian president is talking nonsense about india so the relationship between india and maldive is red few rich people they go for maldive islands for kind of uh, enjoyment as uh, as kind of uh, you can say uh, as far as uh, uh, their uh, uh, you means uh, uh, you can say for enjoyment of the the holidays so in that way they go to mal okay but otherwise tourist tourism so for tourism purpose they go to Maldives, other rich people. Otherwise, it should have been typically Maldives is considered as kind of part of Sri Lanka. Okay, traditionally. So anyway, now Maldives is has a red eye with India. This is the situation with the neighbor country. If we come again the Lakshadweep, so Lakshadweep is part of India and it is kind of comes under Kerala judiciary. So, theoretically or practically, it is part of Kerala. So, it comes under Kerala judiciary and it's not a country, it is part of it. If we come move ahead, then we will come to Sindh. 
that is never of India. So the condition of Sindh now is that no one can even uh, even air cannot enter Sindh from India. So that much stringent it is that. So Sindh and India as far as uh, people and country and whatever it is. So it is completely red, unfortunately. If we come north, then it will enter into Cholistan, Bhavalpur. Bhavalpur, Bhavalpur residence, presidency. So Bhavalpur presidency, like Sindh. Sindh is a one of the place, one of the region which is extremely highly connected to India. It was prior to 1947. Sindh and Gujarat you could consider as same, same, same state. Means people from Sindh and Gujarat, they used to go each other. It is like it was same state. That much connectivity. Completely broken. Okay. Now, Bhavalpur, same condition. It was extremely connected to Rajasthan, Haryana and Punjab. But no touch. Nothing. Even in India, people would not be knowing that there is Cholistan desert or Bhavalpur area in Pakistan. So that is the situation. Punjab region. What can be said? It means Punjab is Punjab. So this side Punjab, that side Punjab. Okay. So it was extremely tightly, it was not extremely tightly coupled, it was same. So, so one thing that got became two. Okay, cut down. Like Bhawalpur was different presidency, but Punjab was same. So one thing that cut down into two parts. Now there is no relation. That is completely red. Now, if we go along, then we will enter into Khaibar Pakhtunwa region, Peshawar region, Mardan region. Okay, those are the places which were highly connected to not only the Punjab region, it was connected till Calcutta. There is a GT road that goes from Calcutta that, okay, that passes through Peshawar. So, Peshawar, Khaibar Pakhtunwa was not connected to Punjab region only, it was connected till Calcutta, okay, Bengal. It was that much connected. No connection. People, they are not knowing there is a place called Mardana. Okay, so completely gone. Now, if we go, then anyway, uh, all along, then then I believe that uh, uh, then if we enter Mujafrabad and Gilgit, Pakistan. So, practically, they are part of Pakistan. Theoretically, they are part of it. So, Full Pakistan, Gilgit, Baltistan, Mujafrabad, and then Khyber Pakhtunwa, then Punjab, and then uh, Cholistan and Bhawalpur, that it comes in Punjab only, and then Sindh. Full part is part of Pakistan now. Now, India claims that, that Pakistan was part of India, and it is a kind of misfortune, it is a kind of bad remembrance that Pakistan became separate. It is part of our, it is our part, body part. This is what Indian, India and Indians think. But Indians generally, they don't know what is the situation of Indian Pakistan border. Leave the diplomatic relationship that is anyway deep red. Deep red means Indian, not only Indians, Indian Prime Minister also, Indian they, 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 the diplomats also, okay. They never uh, visit Pakistan and that side also they never visit India. I believe consulate is there, but no one visit in each other country. It is dead. Only relationship is dead, not the boundary. Boundary is full alive. Full alive in the sense that a full military people are available there. I am not claiming anything political. Military people, they exist. It's fine. But lot of expenditure is going on in the military because India is a poor country. One thing. Second thing is that full thousands of kilometer line from Jammu Kashmir to Gujarat, it is a kind of nailed fence, not simple iron wire, nailed iron wire with thorns. Okay. That fencing has been done. Okay. This doesn't look like that India claim that is if I claim that that is my part. Someone has taken my land and grabbed it. Will I put fence there? They will put fence, right? Since they have taken my land forcibly, forcefully, they will put fence. Why I will put? Because I know it is my land. Why I will put fence? I would like that it should be like that the way it was, right? It's my land someone has grabbed. 
he will put fence or I will put fence. They did not put any fence. Indian India government has put the thousands of people. People do not have foot to it. India is 111 out of 125 in hunger India. But they have tons of money to put fence, tons of money to put militaries. Full money is going there. But anyway, that is not the end. That's why I say that only diplomatic relationship is dead. People are dead. They are not going in. But boundary is alive. Now they have put floodlight along thousands of kilometers. Floodlight that can be seen from the space. The floodlight between India and Pakistan border. The light in night that can be seen from the space so that no one could enter. Because you are saying that is that land is my part and you are fencing it and then full military and then full light. How much you are spending there? A people can go from India to Switzerland easily, very easily. And they take Schengen pass, Schengen visa. If you take Schengen visa, not Switzerland, you can go full Europe. You can roam around. An Indian can roam around in Switzerland. He can spend all his money in Switzerland, but he cannot go next village. Light is there. Then full uh, uh, wiring is there. Then full military is there. That much. Okay. Boss, don't falsify Indian people. That is my request to Indian National Congress and whoever has made a home rule. This is home rule. If this is independence, then what is dependent? If I am staying in a region and I can go along very nicely, and suddenly someone put boundary around me, and then I ask, what is this? Then they reply, this is independent. Is it independent? A person cannot go anywhere around only in one direction he is supposed to go. And all along there is a uh, wire, nailed wire, and then military is roaming around, then full street light, full flood light they have put. I cannot touch those that those areas. I am independent. Is it independent? If I curve a bird going any direction, in one direction, I say now you are independent. This is independent. This is the reason of unemployment. Okay. So Indians are unemployed, and the Indians were employed because of this reason. They are unemployed because of this reason. Now these people who have done this. This is a heinous job. They will give job from where? If you sell out, if you control all agriculture field and don't let agriculture to happen, where from you will give the food? If you curb all the boundaries, if you make boundaries to boundary day by day and people cannot go anywhere, then where from you will give the employment? In railway, how many you will give? Railway, can just go and see the condition of railway. Okay, so don't falsify people. A tiger is saying to a deer that I, I, I am here to protect you. I mean the way we kept protecting you. Anyway, so condition with India and Maldives is red. Condition of India. There is no wired fencing with Maldives because it is ocean. Otherwise that would also have happened. And the, the relationship of India with Pakistan now theoretically if we go along then it will enter into Badkhashan region of Afghanistan. Badkhashan region of Afghanistan is, is touching India theoretically. Miss Gilgit Baltistan of the Jammu Kashmir. So relationship of Afghanistan with India is that great that Afghanistan closed its embassy also in Delhi and they took it away. Now India has no really at least Pakistan embassy is available this is what I can see. But Afghanistan embassy is also not available. So no one can go to Afghanistan at all. I don't know how they are providing the visa to India, but they have closed the embassy. So in Indian subcontinent, Indian neighbor, but Khashan region of Afghanistan, that falls north to Jammu Kashmir, it is very narrow. Okay, that is no more. At least with pa Pakistan, there is an embassy, but that embassy is also gone. So, India, Afghanistan is not red. There is nothing. Okay, India, Pakistan relationship is red. India, Afghanistan, there is no relation. As if Afghanistan does not exist. That much. So, this is the condition of India post 1947. People used to go to Afghanistan regularly. 
dry fruits and those things are abundant in Afghanistan. Don't eat anything, eat air. Okay, if dry fruit come from Afghanistan, they would be cheaper and they would be of high quality, but don't eat. Okay, eat LPG petrol. So that is the situation now. So Badkhasan region is very narrow. If you cross Badkhasan immediately, you will hit Turk, you will hit a Tajikistan. Okay, so Tajikistan is a kind, it doesn't fall under Indian subcontinent, cross Himalaya. But still, it has, it used to have good relationship with that region with India earlier, Tajikistan. So, Tajikistan, the groundnut, okay, it comes in whitish color, whitish yellow, and it is very long, very long, and it is extremely high quality. Generally, you will find it in Lahore and those places. The Tajikistan, Tajikistan groundnut. But it cannot enter India, right? Because these are foreign countries. Don't eat anything. Eat whatever comes through ration, okay? Some petroleum food <laughs> through fertilizer that you eat. But don't eat uh, dry fruit from Afghanistan. Don't eat groundnut or dry fruit. That comes from Tajikistan. But if you should, even North the Kyrgyzstan and those places, then, then dry fruits are abundant. Means if you open the door, then Indian will eat something that is very good and something that very cheap price. But anyway, don't do that. Because we are Indians and of different religion than those people are. People in Europe and USA belong to Indian's religion. But these people, they are of different religion. But anyway, now move ahead and then we will enter Kashi region. Kashi region that is in Takla Makan Desert. All Indian religious rivers, okay, either Kashi River or, okay, so uh, uh, there is a kind of river in uh, Takla Makan region, okay, Tarim River. Actually, it is Sita River. So, Kashi River, Sita River, Hotan River, that is Gosthan River. All religious river of India. They are either in Kashi region or they are in Afghanistan, like Hari Rud, that is Saryo River, or Helmand River, that is Saraswati River, and Gomal River, that is Gomati River, and Kabul River, that is Kuba River. So, all religious rivers are in either in Afghanistan or they are in Kashi region, Sita River to Kashi River, or Kashi is a river, that's why it is Kashi. Here the Kashi, there is no Kashi river. It is false Kashi. But anyway, so Kashi area, there is no red relationship. There is no relationship. Okay. Earlier Kashi opens in India. Means Kashi is a landlocked area and it opens in India. From Pakistan, there is a Karakuram highway that goes to Kashi. Okay, how much is the is the connectivity that I don't know. But anyway, there is nothing. There is no red relationship. Like India, Pakistan, red relation, there is no rela relationship at all. 50, 70 years back, there was full relation. Now there is no relation. Then it comes to Tibet. Okay. Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, these two states, if you say, they were extremely tight relationship with the Tibet. If you see Bihar especially, then they had extremely tight relationship and the Buddhism religion has complete Completely, it is if they have the main temple in Bihar, then they have main uh, spread out in Tibet. So, Tibet, if uh, it is Buddhism, then their temple is in Bihar, in Magadhi. So, Bihar and Tibet, they are extremely highly connected. Now, when there is, there is no Tibet now, I mean, there is no red relationship, there is no Tibet now. People do not know. Okay, there is a Shigatse or there is a Haze or there is a kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, places are there that is near to them, they don't know. They don't know anything because generation by generation, so now everything is gone. Now Bihar people, they cannot go to Tibet, but they are going to other places in India in terms to do the labor work. What is employment? Now you tell me, they would have, through Tibet, there is a path to go to China and there was good uh, business relationship with Bihar and China through Tibet or Uttar Pradesh and China. Now, when Tibet is completely cut out because of a part, home rule and democratic system, 
Now people in Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, you will find them working as a labor in other part of the country. They were doing the kind of uh, uh, business work with Tibet and China part, mainland China, China, and they were happy in their life. Now they are doing labor work in other part of the country. If not that work, then this work. People are anyway happy, right? Because we got a Hindu country and we got independence. This is condition of these two states now. They are in Uttar Pradesh. This is because of the disconnecting with the Tibet only. That's it. Okay. Now, if you go along from Tibet, then you will enter. So, this same condition, then you will see the Burma. Red condition. Or you say no connectivity. So, with Burma and India, there is no connectivity. Then you will find many Bihar people, they are still there in Rangoon and those areas who went there to, to earn livelihood. I mean, there was a tight business relationship between uh, these two states earlier. Now, there is no red condition. There is nothing. It's completely broken. Many people would not be knowing that there is a country called Myanmar. Okay. So, this paralyzed the Assam and North. So, Assam and North East. Tibet one side, Burma other side, down Bangladesh and then, then again Bangladesh. So South Bangladesh, North Tibet, East Burma and then, then uh, West Bangladesh. Very narrow path that comes out from the uh, Assam area that connects to India. That region is completely parallel. Anyway, we are talking about its neighborhood. So no relation, nothing. India has good relationship with United States. And India has good relations with France and Germany and England. But with its neighborhood, which was part of India still some time back, either there is a red relationship or there is no relation. Now, India and Bangladesh, okay, the theoretically they have good relations, but practically it is completely red. Okay, whenever any dispute happens, like four Bigha Jameen dispute happened some time back, they took it. Now, there was many disputed land. Uh, that was that was also given to them. So theoretically, good relationship. Practically, it is completely red. Okay, they change uh, Hindu also. They treat uh, uh, Hindu population there not good because of the red relation. They show that they are not good because of the red relations. So that is also out. Now you come down Andaman Nicobar. It is part of India. Okay, people go and stay there. But there is an island called Central Island. If you go there, people chase. It's not that, and people claim that they are not civilized. The St. Elise Island people are not civilized. Since they are not civilized, they are chasing any outsider. But human, they have human brain at the end. Okay? They are not a, a kind of animal. Human is human. Human brain is different to animal brain. Okay? So their nature is that if, if they see outsider, then they welcome them. Okay, they make you sit in their home and they will offer you food or whatever. This is the human nature. But if they see any outsider, they chase them. Means if they represent uh, uh, Andaman Nikova, then there is no relationship with Andaman Nikova. They don't like the, these people the way they are inhibited in uh, Andaman Nikova, they don't like the local people, they don't like. But anyway, it is part of India. If you go further, then you will reach kind of Sumatra, Aceh, region of the Sumatra. No connectivity. So from Andaman, Nicobar, Nicobar, okay, Indira point, from Nicobar, if you move little bit ahead, then you will reach Aceh province of Sumatra, Indonesia. No relation. Nothing. Even I believe people do not know there is Sumatra or Aceh region. Okay, now if you move, then you will come to Sri Lanka, red ratio. Okay, so the between Tamil Nadu area and Sri Lanka or India and Sri Lanka, there theoretically it is green, practically it is red. Many times the Sri Lankan people, they catch the fishermen of India and they put in the jail unnecessarily because relationship is not good. Now you tell me one thing, that, that what is independence? The region that were belonging to you, region that were considered as India, not under Indian subcontinent, like Afghanistan, India, Pakistan, India, Iran falls under Indian subcontinent. Okay, Tibet, 
I won't say much about this. But anyway, if I see the Tibet and Kasi, they fall in China. So India, China, uh, that, that I did not talk. So India, China relationship is right. Till some time back, there used to be BRIC nation meetings and those things. That is not happening. So India, Burma, no relationship. ASEAN meeting used to happen, uh, session or the get together. That is also not happening. So everywhere, the relationship is red with Sri Lanka. Now you tell me that before 60, 70 years, people used to go anywhere else. Okay, till Britishers were here, there was no visa and passport and people used to go anywhere. Now people cannot walk also, leave going on the train or car or whatever. People cannot walk on. And this leads to heavy population rise and this led to heavy unemployment. Okay. Now you tell me these people, the Indian National Congress, they never address that these many part that we lost, how we will get back, that is different story. At least people should go. Like people, if you take Indian take a Schengen visa. That is European visa. People get European visa. If you go to any European country, you can go anywhere. You take the cash, the train with the same visa, you can roam around anywhere in the Europe. An Indian can go anywhere in the Europe with one visa, but an Indian cannot go to next village that was part of the India 50 years back. How employment will happen? Employment happens through the commercialization. Employment happens through the business relationship. Employment happens when you have to and fro motion, okay, with your neighborhood. If you stop people, then how employment? You will give the employment. Government is not known to give the employment. Government is known only to support people. And if employment is any hindrance, then it support that area. How many employment government? Government employment is being given always by business people. Okay. Like in India, agriculture is the biggest employment in India. What agriculture will happen? People are completely, they feel completely prideless if they uh, do the agriculture. If you want to feel pride in agriculture, then you have to go tractor and fertilizer way. You have to sell all your ox and cow. That is the way you will feel pride. Because that is what government wants. Miss full looting the people. Make people in a boundary. First, if people can go anywhere, talk anywhere, go anywhere, then it is difficult to loot the people. But if you keep people in a boundary and they and then kind of enclose people in a small region, force people to live in a small region, it's easy to loot them, right? This is what I would do. If 100 people are there, it is very difficult to loot them. But if I segregate 10 people separately and they don't mix up with the, uh, another 90, then it is easy to loot them, right? Means this is a common sense. Okay, what you want? You want to live the same life, what is going on now, and get assured that a deer, if deer likes tiger, then you can like them and go and work. 